It's, it's roughly been the same course that we've been running for 30 odd years, um, but it changes its character slightly. The, obviously the students change and that changes things. Various titles of courses have arisen out of the experiences we've had here. Last year we came and experienced the new studio for the first time. And it's got this wonderful big grand piano in it. And first reaction was Clive, our pianist, sits down at the piano. And we're all saying, hmm. That's a little potentially overwhelming in this space, but it does mean that the singers that are working on their opera areas can really go for it. They will feel utterly supported and they'll feel we go for fortissimo and it'll be okay. And then I come in with my lute and I'm working with maybe a slightly more natural kind of voice who's singing very gently. And I'm thinking, hey, these acoustics are great. I can gently strum a chord, she can sing gently. There's no need to fill the space aggressively. You can fill it gently. You offer your sound into this and it will work. So we thought, hey, we've got a good venue here to go from pianissimo to fortissimo. And that's what we've called this course. Because what we're always trying to do is to bring together strands of singing experience that seem in many people's minds to be contradictory. You're either a folk singer with an untrained voice, or you're an opera singer with a trained voice. And we're trying to help people find where these two things meet each other. Maybe you are naturally an untrained voice, but you want to be a bit bigger. In as far as you can go, or you're a trained voice and you're feeling in a straitjacket because of your training and you need to discover some of your childlike freedoms. So with this course we can do that. And that's what we find here is a kind of legacy of honesty and down-to-earthness. And I think Maureen set the tenor for that and it has endured is her legacy, her memory, is let's come here and be honest and get down to earth. It's a dichotomy is it, between naturalness and training. The first cry you make as a baby is a natural sound. It's probably the last one you ever get to do because straight away you're being socialized, trained, in one way or another, depending on your culture, your, your society. So, we all know what is natural, but we increasingly lose touch with it. So we want to try and find the naturalness of blowing, playing, singing, dancing, speaking, being human. Get in touch with that again, make, make connection, and use whatever training you need in order to do the job in hand. Use the training that's appropriate. Let's get a balance between natural and contrived and artificial, as in full of art rather than phony. We need our art, we need our skills, we need our training. And if they're in conflict, we can say, put your training in one box, give it a pretty wrapping and a nice color and say, that's my trained box. And then put your naturalness in another box and give it a pretty wrapping and put it in the cupboard. And then decide which one you're gonna play with today. Play with that one and then put it away. And then, so you're not, getting stuck in the mixture. Put, put your little memories and, and your inspirations and those, those aha moments into that little box and keep it safe. And then it's there when you want it. And all the things you arrive with that maybe are slightly constraining you, like your outdoor coats to cope with the cold weather, leave them on the coat rack. You don't need them here, but you can take them home with you. Put it on to go out into the world. Put your costume back on but keep that little box of treasures in the back seat. We give each other presents. And the present, the present moment is that wonderfully frisky moment in which we live. So the present is a gift. <laughs>